Today's scripture is from Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of the Lord. I bring you greetings, brothers and sisters, in Glen Wesley Methodist Church. I trust you're keeping well at the start of this new year. God bless you richly and watch over you in a journey of faith together. This morning, I want to speak about running the race of life well in 2021 and beyond as well. I want to take this from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Let me read. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfect of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank and praise you for the joy, the blessing, the privilege of gathering in your name like this, O God, today. Father, I pray that you will take your word and speak to each one of us and draw us in response. Father, I pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, there is a man by the name of Roger Bannister who broke the record of running the mile under four minutes on the 6th of May, 1954. Never done in the history of mankind as it were. Then a month later, an Australian by the name of John Landy, he broke Roger Bennett's record by improving by almost two seconds when he wrote Randy's in Finland. As a result, the following month was the British Empire and Commonwealth Games that today we simply call Commonwealth Games. It was held in Malaysia, for example, 1998. And then 1954, Vancouver, these two men got together amongst all the other runners, getting ready for what is known as a miracle mile, competing the best of the best, as it were. The whole world was really excited when to witness this very special event indeed. And there they were, starters gun went off. And John Landy, Australia, been a very good runner, strong, running well. And Rogers managed to sort of keep up with him, keep up with him as much as possible. And then we came to the final bend towards the finishing line. Jay was John Landy still reading right the pack. And he looked towards the back okay, on the left. Here was Roger Bannister overtaking him on the right and went on to finish the race to a roar and shiver the crowd of those in the stadium plus almost 100 million people around the world. What a witness event of history all right, that occasion was. In fact, this unique event is commemorated today by a statue that is erected in Vancouver as well all right, to commemorate that special, special event indeed. And here is John Landy in the statue looking back on the left-hand side and Roger Bannister overtaking on the right. Landy himself said, you know what, Lot, okay, the wife of Lot in the Bible looked back and became a pillar of salt. I looked back and became a pillar of bronze. What a witness of history that we all know. But friends, you know, you and I, our life is actually a race. And that's how you notice, friends, that the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 tells us like this. Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So how can we make sure, friends, we can run this race of life well in 2021 and beyond as well? What other things you and I must look for, look towards, especially this passage of scripture in Hebrews chapter 12? Firstly, encouragement you and I are to receive. What is it in verse 1? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. See, friends, we are all surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Who are these people? These are the saints of old in the Old Testament, as we all know. It's in. Here is, for example, Hebrews 11, giving us a whole list of the great saints of old running this race of life. 
Abraham, for example, witnessing to faith and faithfulness. Joseph refused to be distracted. It's very temptation around him. And all kinds of people, the Old Testament there, to help us, encourage us, and cheer us on. And that's how you know this, friends. Apostle Paul writes words in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 like this. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. See, friends, the Bible is there to teach, to instruct, to encourage us and to enable us to endure and press on in this race of life. But also Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians or at chapter 10 and verse 11, these things happen to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the fulfillment of the ages have come. See, the Bible not only has on one hand encouragement to cheer us on, but also warnings to remind us to guard our hearts and our lives, to make sure that we don't allow these things to stop us in this race of life world. So friends, there's all these things in the Old Testament of the saints of God to cheer us on. But also friends, you know, today we have brothers and sisters to help us along in our journey of faith. The people of God today that we have around us, say, for example, people in church that we've got, people also right, in the cell groups that we are part of. Say, I trust my friends, you in Clang Wesley, you're not part of the cell, can I urge you, encourage you, challenge you to be part of one? Because it is there in a small group. We encourage one another on. We cheer one another on in this race of life. And we all need that. Prayer support, all right, encouragement, a word of comfort, a word of help, okay, for us in our journey of faith. Friends, every one of us, young or old, we all need that. And it's very, very important. In fact, that's how the book of Hebrews tells us like this in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. See, the Bible encourages us that you and I must go all out to encourage one another. Daily, in fact, the Bible tells us this. I would try to do a little bit on my end like this by encouraging people whenever I see them, or sometimes pick up a phone just simply to call them. And this is what we can do in spite of the lockdown, in spite of the MCU, as we all know, is it? And it's so important. So I call, for example, this pass in Japan. How are you doing? He was surprised and shocked, of course. But we've been journeying with him, supporting him in the last few years to say, how are you doing? How's the ministry? How's the work and responsibility? How's your family? Friends, you know, at the end of the time together, they were much encouraged and blessed in this time of conversation. And we all need that, friends. Every one of us. All right? And I trust my friends, you know, this is what you and I must always do again and again. Right, in this race of life together in 2021 and beyond. But not only that, friends, it's encouragement for you know, to receive, but it's encouragement that you can give to other people as well, isn't it? People around. Like, thank God, for example, in due MC, all right, in the last MCO lockdown last year, we have served more than 15,000 people in terms of food and support or rentals and different things. We count it a great joy and privilege. I believe, friends, you, know, you all in claims Wesley must have also done it as well, plus many other churches around the country. So, friends, we all need this encouragement and help and challenge so that we press on together in a journey of faith. Not only, friends, the encouragement you and I can receive from one another, there is also, friends, for you, all of us, entanglements that we must guard. Isn't it? But there are things that can trip us over that you and I must watch out for. And so, all right, in verse 1 again, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. See, there are things that can entangle us, things that can prevent us from running this race of life well. What are some of these? All right, they are, for example, money, sex, and power that we know, isn't it, quite well. The whole area of handling of our monies to make sure that we are transparent, we are totally honest, all right, that we are accountable. And this way, otherwise, we don't finish well. Whole era of sex, for example, sometimes inappropriate relationship with the opposite sex. That can, friends, you know, trip us over. Or in whole area of power, abuse or misuse of power, using power to oppress people, to beat people down. Those are not good examples, friends, of bearing witness to Christ. But I want to put that aside and talk about other kinds of entanglements that can keep us from finishing well. What are some of these? Resentment and anger, for example, is it? Maybe because what people have said to us or done to us, we are hurt, we are wounded, we are really upset. And as a result, sometimes anger builds up within it. And if you're not careful, this can turn into resentment, isn't it? All right? And this can, if you're not careful again, 
prevent us from running this race of life. That's a reality, all right, for all of us, isn't it? So what does Bible prescribe for us? How to handle when the resentment, bitterness, anger in us? Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13, Paul writes, Bear with each other, forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgive as the Lord forgave That's a command of Scripture. Why is, is it that you and I must forgive? Because God in Christ has forgiven us, and that's the reason why you must, we and I must forgive, isn't it? Follow the example of Jesus himself as well like this. That is so, so important. So, now, I remember, for example, speaking at a meeting up north in Penang at a medical right, conference. And then uh, there was a young medical doctor. She has been unfortunately played out betrayed by the husband. So badly, she was so, so angry. But that particular evening, as I was speaking, the Lord did wonderful work in her of healing, of restoring her to where she ought to be. At the end, she came up and shared with me and asked for prayer. And the prayer, she was crying and crying and crying, buckets literally. Because why? God wants to bring healing on our lives and He doesn't want this anger, bitterness to rip us apart. If we're not careful, this can prevent us from finishing well. A second area that you and I get to watch out for is guilt and shame, isn't it? Maybe because what we have said or what we have done, we feel terrible, we feel terribly guilty, and sometimes even really condemned by this whole thing like this, isn't it? But friends, you know, what is the solution? What is the answer when there's guilt and shame in us? There's a need for you and I, friends, to come before God, to acknowledge our sin and our shame and ask Him to forgive us as we confess and repent from all this. And that's important. And don't allow this to hold us back. All right? That's critical for all of us. And when we do that, what happens to us? Right? Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2. Paul writes, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. You see, when we confront the sin, all right, and wrongs that we have done in our lives. What happens? And ask for forgiveness as we repent of this. God brings healing to all of us, all right? God restores us so that now, my friends, there is no condemnation anymore in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Satan, the devil, wants to accuse us and tell us you're useless, you're lousy, you're shameful for what you have done. But friends, not the Lord Jesus Christ. He has come to restore us. He has come to put us back on track to run this race of life. And that's very important, friends. So the way to deal with guilt and shame is not to hide. All right? It's not pretend it is not there. It is not as it were to be drawn from people, no, friends. The way to do it is to confront it. All right? To ask for forgiveness, to repent, to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to turn away from it. So that, friends, we really move on because this is a God who doesn't condemn, who wants to restore and move us on in the journey of faith in our lives. A third area of entanglement is that of anxiety, worry, or fear. See, I know, especially right now during this MCO period, we are gripped with real anxieties. What is life all about? Where are we going? Is there hope in the future? And even for us as Christians, sometimes we're deeply troubled, isn't it? All right? As we're hemmed in like this, wondering, is there really a way forward for all of us? Friends, you know, this anxiety and fear, Jesus Christ himself addresses it for all of us. How does he put it? Here in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about your body, what you wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Then verse 28 to 30. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? See, friends, the whole era of worry, anxiety, all right, is really a testimony about the lack of faith, O you of little faith that Jesus talks about. It's really unbelief, not trusting God as to who he is and what he can do in our lives. And so, friends, while we, for example, may not know what the future holds, you and I know who holds the future, God in Jesus Christ. And that's why we step out and walk in faith and not in fear and anxiety, isn't it? And that's how, friends, the Apostle Paul counsels us in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So any anxiety or worry, even fear, friends, you know, hand it to God, talk to Him. He's interested in our struggles, in our pains in life, so that as we handle this honestly before God, He steps in and assures us He is there in charge and in control, so that we trust Him about our life, about our safety, our security, and our future, especially in times like this when there's so much uncertainty around. Sometimes we can be gripped, really, and become, if we're not careful, not just fearful, become paranoid by it. And so, for example, sometimes, you know what, we go to a supermarket to buy things and bring it back home. And every single piece, okay, of grocery that we bought must be washed properly in water before we put it away, right, or, or, into, or into a refrigerator. Or maybe every single rigid note that we brought back, it must be washed properly in water, dry before we put it away in our purse or in our wallet. Friends, sometimes, you know, yes, these are precautions you and I must take, and we must all undertake the necessary SOPs. But friends, you know, we cannot be so fearful that as a result, it grips us, we become paranoid, and we can be crippled by it in a process like this, isn't it? Friends, you know, you and I are God's people. We've got a good God that we can trust Him, isn't it? How long we live, yes, we should, as I said, undertake the necessary SOPs where no fools to throw right caution to the wind. We do the necessary. But beyond our friends, you know, you and I must walk in faith, in trust, in a belief this God is good, who cares for me, who is designed for my very best, friends. And that's how we live our lives, friends. Not in worry, anxiety, or fear, but in faith and trust in the living God, so that this will not entangle us in this race of life whatsoever. Another area is disappointment or disillusionment in life. You know, sometimes, right, maybe it could be because, right, we feel our prayers are not answered by God. And so for some people, they get really disappointed, if not disillusioned with what kind of God it is. Now, these prayers could be genuine, sincere, honest prayers. Praying, for example, for the healing of your son, and healing doesn't come. And some people, as a result, say, what kind of God? Forget about it. I'm walking out. But friends, for people like this who walked out, I say, who do you turn to? All right. What help can you honestly receive with turn from the living God? Friends, we don't know why sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers or all prayers. But trust Him because He's a good God. He knows what is best because He sees everything from beginning to the end, isn't it? And that's what you and I must step out in faith like this. Can I add on this bit? Even the prayer of Jesus wasn't answered, if you remember. All right, there was Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane in the last few moments of his life. There, kneeling there before all right, the Father in heaven. Jesus prayed all right, to the Father in heaven. All right, Take this cup away from me. Not my will, but yours be done. See, there was Jesus expressing his own desire. Father, take this cup, meaning cup of suffering. Take this suffering away from me. But not, of course, my will, but yours be done. But you know what, friends? Thank God the Father did not answer that prayer. Because had the Father answered that prayer, you know what? You and I are still lost in our sins. There's no salvation for us, for the whole world, whatsoever, is it? All right? And so thank God for this, friends. God the Father knows what is best. He holds everything together from beginning to the end. And we trust Him, all right? Believing that, well, sometimes we may not know why it is like this right now. But friends, you and I will know one day. Why it is when God shows us everything from beginning to the end. And this is where, friends, you know, sometimes over the same incident, all right, one can end up very bitter and angry with God. And then one can end up totally different altogether. See, friends, things, when things happen to us in life, 10% is about what happens. 90% is about our response to what has happened. We can respond in anger, bitterness, all right? And as a result, friends, be crippled in the process, or we respond by saying, Lord, I don't fully understand, but I trust you on the belief you're a good God. And for people that is, they still press on in their life, still honor God and serve God. And their lives become an encouragement or an inspiration of many friends. And that's what you and I have got to be living our lives for like this. So friends, you know, there is firstly, in this race of life, encouragement to receive. There is also secondly, entanglements we are must guard. And these are some of the entanglements we are must guard. Third and finally, the example to follow. All right. Who is this example to follow? Here 
in the first part of verse 2, all right, of uh, Hebrews 13. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. See, so the example is that the Lord Jesus Christ, who stands there as supreme okay, example for all of us to follow, is it? In what way? This passage Hebrew tells us three areas, friends. You and I have got to imitate and follow Jesus. What are these? Firstly, Jesus sees beyond the cross to the joy. Why? Again, in verse 2, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. See, friends, when Jesus was there facing the cross, he doesn't see just the pain, all right? The cross representing pain. He sees beyond the pain, ready to the gain he's going, all right, to inherit, isn't it? That there is indeed reward and glory to come. In other words, friends, you know what? Jesus sees the joy in the midst of the pain, in the midst of really, friends, the cross staring in his face like this. And that's what is encouragement to all of us likewise, friends, to look at things in life. That sometimes we may be going through struggles and difficulties, okay, uh, and pain in life. But see beyond that as to what is God teaching me? How is God trying to instruct me in my faith and my journey of faith? See beyond the pain to the gain. Many times, friends, God wants us to inherit. Isn't it? And that's so important for all of us. All right? Because over the same thing, as I said, we can gain so much. And this is where you and I look to Jesus at the end of it all like this. So that in our journey of faith in life, we say, Lord, what are you teaching, instructing me so that I can grow and mature and become a better person and follow Jesus Christ? The second thing about Jesus as our example is that he's unashamed in what he goes through. Why again then, verse 2, scorning its shame. Jesus looked at the whole thing, right, and is unashamed in what he went through. People mocked at him. People laughed at him. People said to him, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross, is it? Could Jesus do that? Of course he could as the son of the living God. But Jesus refused to. He was willing, all right? to scorn the shame he was going through in spite of all the jeer and the mocking all right, that was thrown at him like this. And that's what, friends, you know, you and I got to do in our lives likewise. Are we ashamed, for example, in bearing the name of Christ? Are we ashamed, for example, in bearing even witness to the Lord Jesus Christ? It's a reminder to us, isn't it, that we look to Christ as he presses on and scorn and shame. We must also be bold and courageous anywhere and everywhere to be unashamed, to bear witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds me of this incident last year. In fact, I flew up to Penang to speak at the Georgetown Baptist Church right, during the RMCO period. And I uh, flew up on Saturday, preached Sunday morning, flew back. But that early Sunday morning, I got up to go to the gym to do some workout all right, in the gym. And after a wonderful workout in the gym, my plan was come back, wash up quickly, take a quick breakfast, dash off all right, to preach. And uh, after the workout in the gym, I walked towards a counter and there's a lady, all right, hotel staff there overseeing our gym. I said, thank you so much for taking such good care of the gym. Appreciate that indeed. Uh, by the way, what's your name? I asked her. She said, Guy Thierry. Good to meet you, Guy Thierry. Thank you so much indeed. Guy Thierry, all right, by the way, my name is Daniel Ho. I'm a pastor from Kuala Lumpur, all right? And out of 7 billion people, Guy Thierry, God brings a pastor today to meet you like this here at the gym. All right. When I told her I'm a pastor, she started to tear, actually. I said, Guy Thierry, really, you're very special. All right. And uh, I shared with her about Jesus. Okay. And at the end, you know what? I challenged her to open her heart to Jesus. She said, okay. Of course, after a while, I noticed she struggles in English. I flipped over to Bahasa. And eventually, I led to faith in Christ in Bahasa. Right, in my limited Bahasa. At the end, I said to a guy, Thierry, all right, and she was crying, crying like crazy. I said, at the end, but before I said that, she, she took my hand and put on her head and asked me to pray some of her blessings. What an amazingly smart lady. I said, Guy Thierry, by the way, have you got a family? She said, yes. All right, I'm 41 years old, by the way. I've got eight children. My goodness. Okay, and my children are ages 24 to 11 years old. I said, what about your husband? Yes. Right? My husband, 52 years old, actually is in prison. I said, I'm so sorry to hear about it. What happened? Because of drugs. And she said, you know what? I've actually basically given up on that relationship. So I'm now more or less a single mother. Right? And after the job here, I dash off in the evening to take on another job to try to hold my family together. So I've been working 
the hardest possible to really keep everyone together as a family. I said to her, guide you, I'm so sorry to hear about that. All right, if you don't mind, could you give me your phone contact? So when I get back, I'll contact a pastor in Penang, all right, who will follow up with you. He said, okay. She said, sure. You know, when I flew back, soon after contact my good friend, Pastor San Surrender, a great pastor, pastoring a great church, Excel Point Community Church in Penang. And so he immediately got right, a church member of his to connect right Guy Thierry and follow up. And so here's Guy Thierry, for the first time meeting a pastor in Penang in life together with an 11-year-old daughter. And then a few days later, here's Guy Thierry again, all right, joining God's people in worship of the living God, like this, all right, there in the church. Friends, you know, there are many people in their lives, they look good on the outside, but you never know what is on the inside. There can be wounds and hurts and pains, confusion, struggles and sorrows, and especially during this time of MCO, friends, fear and uncertainty. You and I are put there by God to connect, to help them, and to lead them to find hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that friends, you know what? Not only they have now found a family here on earth, they have found, friends, salvation, right, and a home in heaven forever and ever. Said, what joy privilege, friends. Let's go all out to do that, can we? Especially during this time, with all the confusion and the fear and uncertainty around us. So Jesus becomes an example for us, okay, in that, friends, he looks beyond the cross to the joy. He not only that, friends, you know what, scorned the shame that he was going through, but finally, he endures the opposition that he was going through. Why? Again, verse 3. Consider him endured such opposition from sinful men, so that no grew weary and lose heart. See, in fact, the all right, the attacks upon Jesus, he pressed on. He refused to give in and give up whatsoever. What an example of faith, of faithfulness of Jesus that patterns for each one of us to live our lives like this. And that's so important, isn't it, for you and I? All right. That in the midst of our journey, all right, our faith. Friends, you and I can be sure that if you're faithful to Christ, there are times things might not be easy. And so what do we do? How do we respond? But we press on, friends, like the example of Jesus Christ. Never grew weary, nor lose heart whatsoever. Let me close with this example. I think this man by the name of Graham Staines, origin from Australia, who went to India to work in this very poor uh, group of people, all right, there in this part of India, okay, Orissa whereby people suffering from leprosy, right? Leprosy as well as great poverty and worked amongst the people there, bringing help and hope to all of them like this. And there, Graham Staines met right, a lady, also from Australia, working there by Gladys, and they married. And eventually, God gave them three children, all right? Okay, Philip, Timothy, and the older one, Esther. And what happens is Graham, right, one day traveled to a camp that they had together in, in a jungle, a right, Christian camp amongst the workers, amongst the, the, the team and all this. But they decided a lot on the journey there to camp for a night, okay, so that they're fresh the next morning to carry on. And they were so camping there in their own van because of the coldness of the weather, they couldn't find anywhere to stay in their own okay, station wagon. They slept there, Graham and the two sons, Philip at that point of time, age 10, Timothy, age 6. But you know what, on the 22nd of January, 1999, in the middle of the night, a mob of unfortunate Hindu fundamentalists set upon them and set the station wagon on fire. They were trying to get up, but they couldn't because they were hemmed in by these people. And you know what, sadly, they were burned to death. It became a news that horrified not only India, all across the world. How could such a thing happen? Here they were, friends, pressing on to trying to serve and be a blessing. And yet, in spite of that, strong opposition from people trying to prevent him from doing the work of God and be a help and offering hope to people like this. But the amazing thing is this, friends. Right at the funeral of Graham together with two sons, the wife Gladys stood there in the midst of this together with daughter Esther at that time, 13 years old. And she said to everyone with media presence, you know what? I have chosen to forgive these people who have killed and burned my husband and two precious children alive. I don't want to hold any anger, bitterness against them. What a testimony, friends, of faith and faithfulness. What an example, friends, of people who refuse to go weary nor lose heart in serving God and the ministry of kingdom. What an example and encouragement I trust, friends, to all of us like this as we press on in a journey of faith, isn't it? In fact, what happens, Gladys was conferred a few years later, 
the fourth highest civilian award by the government of India for her work towards the poor and the needy. And then several years later, right, Gladys was then conferred the Mother Teresa Memorial Award for Social Justice. See, friends, God in his mysterious way, at the end of it all, comes back, friends, to honor people like this who have been faithful right, and fervent in carrying the work of God like this. Is it? And so, friends, you and I, I trust, will be encouraged likewise to press on no matter what. So that, friends, in 2021 and beyond, we will run this race of life well. So in the midst of challenge, even opposition, friends, we look to Jesus, right, who is the author and perfect of faith, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, right, okay, and ran this race of life and finished well to the glory. May we all also likewise do the same, my friends. Let us pray. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to firstly pray for those who are listening in, that if you're not a Christian, I want to lead you to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because this is really the best thing that can happen to you in your life. It happened to me many years ago from a non-Christian background. And I believe for many also who are tuning in right now. But I believe, my friend, it can happen to you likewise if you have not yourself taken a step of faith to trust in Christ. So if you like to, Will you follow after me right in your heart as I lead you in this prayer to trust in Jesus and become a Christian, a child of God? And I want to assure you, guarantee you, you're in for an amazing ride of your life. Not there'll be no difficulties, but His grace, His strength will be there for you, with you all the way to the end. So if you'd like to follow after me with you in your heart as I lead you in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for your love for me. Thank you that you went to the cross to die for my sins. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Now come right now into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and your power and give me your love, your peace and your joy that I can trust you and journey with you from today onwards for the rest of my life. Amen. Let me pray for all of us now. And so, Father, we thank and praise you for the reminder to all of us about this life of ours. Oh, God, it's a race. And I pray, Father, you help us all to run this race of life, well, not in 2021, but also, oh, God, all the way to the end. Help us, Father, I pray, to be a constant encouragement to one another so that we would cheer one another on in this race of life, but also to watch out for entanglements in our life that where we've been hurt, we have choose to forgive. Oh God, where our Father, there is, oh God, guilt and shame. We are confronted, oh God, and confess it and put ourselves right so that there is no condemnation whatsoever in the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. Where there is anxiety and fear and worry. Father, I pray we step out to trust you and allow your peace, oh God, to guard our hearts and our minds in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, oh God, where there is disappointment, disillusionment, Lord, I pray we will deal with it. To believe in you, you are a good and gracious and wonderful God. Because we don't see everything, right, the full picture. We trust you because you are good and wonderful. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you will continue to be there as our example in this race of life all the way to the end. So bless every one of us, Father, I pray, O God, and glorify your name, Father, I pray, in the lives and work and ministry, O God, of this great church claim, Wesley Methodist Church, Father, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, friends, can I say for those of you who have prayed just now, the first prayer to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, would you please get in touch with the church? So the church, I'm sure, will send someone to follow up with you and help you, right, to be part of the life of Clang Wesley Methodist Church. For the rest of you, friends, God bless you richly. Have a great day, great week ahead, great year, and beyond as well. God bless you.